Good morning, church. My name is Beatrice Odede, and it's my honor to be the service leader today, and my great pleasure to welcome you to this service. I want to start with a word from the Bible. I'll read from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. It says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Through his blood. How many times do we lose faith in the blood of Jesus? Do we sometimes feel that the blood of Jesus is not as strong, as powerful as it's said to be? Because how many times do we beat ourselves? How often do we beat ourselves with the sins we have committed in the past for which we have asked for forgiveness through Jesus Christ? And we still beat ourselves. How many times do we as Christians look as a, as a fellow Christian, a born-again Christian, and say, is this one born again? The things he used to do. He has been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. We have to have faith in the blood of Jesus. He died on the cross for us. So it would be so useless of us not to, 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 to use that blood that he shed for us to cleanse ourselves and forgive, and forgive ourselves of our sins as he has forgiven us. Let us pray. My dear Lord, we come before you today with thanksgiving. We are happy to be here, my Lord. We are thankful that you allowed us to be here. Not everybody woke up today, and not everybody woke up well today, and op not everybody was able to come to, to, to attend a service today. So we thank you, God. We thank you for this. We pray for this service. Be, be with us through the service. Let the service be covered with the protective hedge of Holy Ghost fire, my Lord. Let each one of us who are going to be ministering be guided by the Holy Spirit. I pray for the worship team. I pray for the intercessory prayer, uh, Peter Chinia. I pray for uh, the choir. I pray for, the, for Pastor Karanja, who is going to be giving us the word today. And I pray, God, that you open our ears, our eyes, our hearts, so that we, the, the, your word can feed us. I pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs>
never changes, oh Jesus. You are who you are, Jehovah, and we glorify you, Lord. We worship you, oh Jesus. We adore you, our King. We say there's no one like you, oh Jesus. Porque así for Jehovah. Oh, we proclaim your name, Jesus. Your name is great. Your name is holy. Your name is
sifa mfalme wa falme. Tunakurudishia sifa na shukrani Jehova jire Bwana. Siku ya leo Bwana hata kutuwezesha kuja mahali hapa kuja kukuabudu wewe mfalme wa falme. Tunakupatia sifa zetu na shukrani Jehova jire kwa uzima na uhai baba yetu wa mbinguni. Tunajua baba watu wamekusanyika kila mahali Jehova jire Bwana. Dunia yote baba yetu wa mbinguni. Baba siku ya leo kwa sababu ya kukuabudu wewe kwa roho na kweli Jehova jire. Nasi baba yetu wa mbinguni siku ya leo Bwana. Tunaenda kuomba Bwana ukaende kutukuka katika ibada yako ya siku ya leo Jehova jire. Pata kutuandaa baba yetu wa mbinguni. Pata kutuandaa kwa sababu ya ibada ya siku ya leo Bwana. Tutayarishe Jehova Mungu uishemile baba yetu wa mbinguni. Thank you Jesus Father. You give all the glory and honor Jehovah this time Jehovah Lord my God. You are God. You are king of king eh, Jehovah Jire. You are lord of lords eh, Jehovah Jire. We give you all the glory Jehovah Jis this morning Jehovah Lord. Asante baba yetu wa mbinguni. Wewe ni Mungu wewe ni Ebenezer baba yetu wa mbinguni. Tunakupatia sifa na shukrani Jehovah Jire bwana. Umekuwa Ebenezer umekuwa kimbilio katika maisha yetu. Baba umeweza kutulinda toka Jumatatu, Jumanne, Alhamisi hata Ijumaa, Jumamosi na siku ya leo bwana siku ya ibada yako Jehovah Jire. Nasi baba yetu wa mbinguni tumekusanyika mahali hapa kuja kukuabudu wewe kwa roho na kweli Jehovah Jire. Wacha uwepo wako kaende kuonekana mahali hapa baba yetu wa mbinguni. Kweli kama wanadamu kuna mengi ambayo tumeenenda siku ya leo, tumeenenda wiki nzima, lakini Jehova Jire wewe ni Mungu wa msamaha. Pale baba tulikosea Jehova Jire Kwa njia yote ile baba yetu wa mbinguni tunatubu na kuungama katika jina la Yesu Kristo Bwana. Kuna dhambi ambayo Bwana tumehusishwa pasipo kujua. Kuna dhambi ambayo tumetenda kwa kujua baba yetu wa mbinguni. Lakini baba tunakuja mbele zako na kutubu na kuomba msamao kaende kutusamea mfalme wa wafalme. Pokea sifa Jehova Jire. Tukijua Bwana unaenda kuonekana siku ya leo katika ibada ya leo Jehova Jire. Wacha ukaende kutukuka. Wacha ukaende kuonekana. Shetani kuleta confusion ibada inapoenda kuendelea katika jina la Yesu akaweze kushindwa. Mungu Mungu uishie milele bwana hata mninaji wa siku ya leo mikononi mwako tunamuandaa mfalme wa wafalme anapoenda kusimama mahali hapa Jehova Jire ukamtumie kama chombo tu mfalme baba yetu wa mbinguni anaoenda kunena baba yetu wa mbinguni wacha roho wako mtakatifu akaweze kumtumia Jehova Jire wacha kaende kunena yako Mungu uishie milele bwana nasi Jehova Jire bwana tunapoenda kusikia neno lako Jehova Jire bwana tukaweze kulitafakari ndani ya maisha yetu ndani ya mioyo yetu baba yetu wa mbinguni ili aweze kutubadilisha nia na menendo yetu baba yetu wa mbinguni. Baba kuna wengi Jehova Bwana, pengine wako hapa wajisi vizuri baba yetu wa mbinguni. Kuna wengine wako hapa waja kujua baba yetu wa mbinguni. Lakini siku ya leo Jehova Mungu uishie milele. Wacha wale ambao ni wadhaifu wa mili, wanapoenda kutoka siku ya leo baada ya baada ya siku ya leo. Baba wakatoke wakiwa wamepokea uponyaji katika jina la Yesu. Shetani pepo la maradhi tunalikemea katika jina la Yesu. Mungu uishie milele. Hata wale ambao waja kukiri wewe kwa Kristo katika maisha yao. Wacha siku ya leo wanapoenda kutoka mahali hapa bwana. Wacha wakatoke wakiwa wamekutana na wewe katika jina la Yesu Kristo mwana wa Mungu. Wale ambao wamevunjika moyo kwa sababu ya hali ya uchumi, kwa sababu ya hali ngumu ambayo bwana imekuwa katika dunia nzima Jehova Jire. Wacha baba yetu wa mbinguni ukawatie moyo baba yetu wa mbinguni. Zaidi ya yote baba yetu wa mbinguni neno lako linatuambia bwana, tukaweze kulitia jina lako madamu unapatikana baba yetu wa mbinguni. Kweli kuna mapito, maisha ni magumu baba yetu wa mbinguni, lakini zaidi ya yote bwana tukalitia jina lako baba yetu wa mbinguni. Ni wewe tu unaenda kutuokoa na haya mambo yote ya dunia hii Jehova Jire Bwana. Baba tunajua kuna janga hili ambalo Bwana limetokea Bwana katika dunia zima Jehova Jire. Watu wamepoteza maisha ya Bwana, watu wamepoteza kazi zao baba yetu wa mbinguni. Nyumba Bwana zimebomoka Jehova Jire Bwana. Mara nyingi zimekufa baba yetu wa mbinguni. Mungu uishie milele baba yetu wa mbinguni. Wacha ukaonekane Jehova Jire. Baba tunakuita baba yetu wa mbinguni. Tunakuita sasa Mungu uishie milele Bwana. Onekana baba katika hali hii ambayo imetokea Jehova Jire Bwana. Hatuna kumkimbilia Jehova, hatuna tegemeo lengine pasipo kwa wewe Mungu uishie milele Bwana. Wacha baba kaende kujidhirisha katika jina la Yesu Mungu uishie milele. Maana ni wewe tunayekutegemea katika maisha yetu Bwana. Hatuna mwingine isipokuwa ni wewe mfalme wa wafalme. Wacha baba kaende kuonekana Jehova. Tukemea janga hili katika jina la Yesu Kristo mwana wa Mungu. Hata na maradhi mengine pia tunayakemea katika jina la Yesu. Kwani tunajua kwa mapigo yako tulipata nguvu na uponyaji. Tukijua hakika sisi si wagonjwa mfalme wa wafalme. Wacha kaende kuonekana mfalme baba yetu wa mbinguni. Wacha hali kaende kurudi sawa baba yetu wa mbinguni. Hata wengine wamekuwa na hofu, hata makanisani hawaji tena Jehova Jire. Imekuwa ni COVID Mungu uishie milele, lakini ukaende kunena nao Jehova Jire Bwana. Ukaende kunena wale wote ambao Bwana hata wametoroka hata kuja kuabudu wewe kwa sababu ya COVID Jehova Jire. Tunajua COVID iko popote pale Jehova Jire, lakini la sawa Bwana ni 
kukimbilia wewe Jehova chile bwana nikukutumainia wewe katika maisha haya baba yetu wa mbinguni maana tunapokuwa ndani yako Jehova jire tutashinda hali hii baba yetu wa mbinguni maana neno lako linatuambia wewe ni zaidi ya washindi mfalme wa ufalme baba ni asante pokea sifa pokea sifa na utukufu mfalme wa ufalme hata ibada hii bwana ukaende kuitawala ukaende kuonekana Jehova jire bwana nenda kukabidhi hata watumishi wa kanisa hili mikononi mwako baba yetu wa mbinguni nenda ukawatie nguvu Jehova ukawabariki ukawainue mfalme wa ufalme wewe Jehova jire wewe ndio umeweka mahala hapa Jehova jire wacha baba yetu wa mbinguni unapo bwana kwa pamoja nao Jehova jire ukawainue ukawatie nguvu mfalme wa ufalme hata jamii zao kaende kuwabariki katika jina la Yesu Kristo mwana wa Mungu hata bwana viongozi wote wa kila ministry pia ukawabariki ukawainue katika jina la Yesu Kristo hata nyali congregate wote bwana ukaende kuwabariki baba yetu wa mbinguni pokea sifa na utukufu Jehova jire wasafiri wote ukawalinde ukawaepushe na hatari za mofu shetani ukatawale njiani ukatawale mabarabarani angani na hata majini watu wako wanapoenda kuwa wanaosafiri mzuri hata kufika salama sifa na shukrani zidi kudishia baba yetu wa mbinguni Mungu ni asante Jehova Mungu ishe milele maana wewe ni Ebenezer maana unastahili hakuna Mungu kama wewe Jehova jire bwana unajua hoja za kila mmoja baba yetu wa mbinguni tana hoja za kila mmoja katika jina la Yesu Kristo mwana wa Mungu pokea sifa mfalme wa falme wewe ni Mungu na unastahili Jehova jire pokea sifa maana unastahili bwana hakuna Mungu kama wewe na ni katika jina la Yesu tumeomba na kuamini oh thank you Jesus oh thank you Lord asante bwana thank you very much worship team Thank you very much, uh, Peter Chinia, for the intercessory prayer. As I said earlier, for those who have just uh, joined us, my name is Beatrice Odede, and I'll be leading the service today. I want to move to the notices. Um, the notices, as you're aware, notices are part and parcel of worship. So the first notice we have is the, about the AGM. Today, 18th of uh, April, today we are having our AGM at 12 o'clock. Straight after the second service, we'll have our AGM. And we are asking members to kindly plan to attend. Even if you are watching online, if you are able to come at 12 o'clock for the, for the AGM, you're most welcome. Please make an effort and come and join us. Because we need you to help make decisions that will guide the church, move the church forward. The second note is about discipleship classes. We are resuming our disi discipleship classes. As you're aware, they've been, we've not had them for a while because, uh, of course, last year was a strange year, but now we are resuming. And we'll be starting from 9.30 a.m. to 10.20 a.m. Interested members are encouraged to register with the office. This is, uh, we'll be having them between the two services, between the 8 o'clock service and between the 10.30 service. So 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. for the discipleship classes. Then the third note is about membership class classes. These are resuming soon. Those who wish to, res uh, to become registered members of Nyali Baptist are advised to access registration forms available at the church office or download them from our website. Um, our online services continue as we're having now. On for Sunday school, we start at 9.30 a.m. and for adult service starts at 10.30 a.m. every Sunday. Um, and of course, our in-person uh, in Services are also continuing. We have the service at 8 o'clock in the morning. The first service, the second service is at 10.30 in the morning. So you are, if you want to attend the in-house, uh, the in-person meeting, again, you're most welcome. Now it's time for giving our offertory. I want to pray for the offertory as you prepare to give. Let us pray. My dear Lord, we thank you so much that you have given us this opportunity to worship through you through, through our offering. Bless this offering, my Lord, and let it do all that it's meant to do, Lord. And God, those who are not able to give an offering today, we pray that you, you, you enable them next time. Give them the ability to, to participate in the offertory also, my dear Lord. And I want to pray also for our speaker, Lord. Pastor Karanja is going to be the speaker for the day. We ask you to be with him. Let him be your mouthpiece. Whatever he says, let it be from you and let it guide us. Let us open our ears and open our minds and our hearts so that whatever he has to share, we will reach home. We pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
bless the Lord for his grace and his faithfulness. It's amazing to just know that the love of the Lord is with us even during this season. The Lord has always been gracious to us as we hear the word of the Lord today. Uh, today we talk about power in togetherness. Power in togetherness. Acts 2, 42 to 47. And the Bible says, All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place, shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshipped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who are being saved. Power in togetherness. Abba, Father, in Jesus' name, pray, Father, that you help us to understand your word today. Reveal yourself to us, to the glory and honor of your name. Let your word dwell in us and guide us and help us to know what you have for us and the plan that you have for us this day as we talk about power in togetherness in Jesus' name. Now, the Acts chapter number two where we have read came in when the immediate context is basically the day of Pentecost or the anointing and the presence of the power of the Holy Spirit upon the believers. And so, power in togetherness is a result of Holy Spirit manifestation. The Holy Spirit was already present among the people, and that's why they were called the believers. They are identified in terms of their positioning and where they are. And so, the Bible says, so the Holy Spirit when they were together, out of the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that becomes a manifestation. They are believing together. They are staying together. They are fellowship together. They are sharing of the meal together. Their prayer together was a result of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit of God. You know, the Holy Spirit of God reveals to us. 1 Corinthians 2.10 reminds us, but it was to us that God revealed these things by His Spirit. For His Spirit searches out everything and shows us good God's deep secrets. So the secrets of God are revealed to us through the Holy Spirit of God who is able to search the things of God. And, and so when these people were gathering together, when they were there together, there were revelations that came forth to them out of the Holy Spirit whom brought forth to them God's deep secrets. And so when you talk about power in togetherness, that means that whenever we are together, whenever we fellowship together, we pray together, we come as a church together, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit of God need to be evident. And so it's not just gathering. It's not just being there. There must be a manifestation. And we find and realize that these people worship together. They shared the meals together. They even sold their property and shared with them that were in need. That some, somehow that the Holy Spirit was able to reveal to them even the needs that were in their midst. And so when we are together, we even know the kind of needs that we have. Right now in a pandemic season, there are many things that are happening. And there are quite a number of people who are in need. Sometimes not only financially, but sometimes just that prayer. Because they are so defeated somehow by the things that have come forth to them. And so the spirit of the living God reveals to us the deep secrets of God. And so they were together as a manifestation of the Holy Spirit of the living God. And so the Bible reminds us, in, again in verse 12 of 1 Corinthians 2, that therefore we have received God's Spirit. 
not the world spirit. So we can know the wonderful things that God has really given us. And so these people, the spirit of togetherness, had even given them the understanding of the free things that God has given them. And one of them is salvation. And they were able to stay together. And they were able to fellowship together. And the Bible says, even the fruit of them being together were believers being added every day to their fellowship. The other part is that powering togetherness is devotional to the word of God. This is a result of their devotional to the word of God. And here the Bible talks about the apostles' teaching. What were the apostles' teaching? They were basically testifying about the birth of Jesus Christ, his ministry, his life, the death, and the resurrection. That's what they were talking about. Again, when you are still check again Acts chapter number 2, the immediate context of where we have read. And so the people gathered together to get devoted to the word of God. And the Bible reminds us and tells us that they were not only there just thinking about what is going on, but they got devoted to the teachings of the apostles. They needed a further understanding. They realized there is something to tap into the word of God. Hebrews 4.12 tells us, for the word of God is living and active. The word of God is living and active. So as they were interacting and getting devoted to the word of God, they were getting devoted to the word of God that is living and active. And the Bible continues to say, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing the divisions of soul and spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. So this word that is living and active was able to get even into the intentions of their heart. And that's why there was power when they were together. The intent of their heart was also spoken to. That's why they were able to share meals. Again, sell, uh, sell property and share together. And there was such a powerful fellowship. But this did not just come because of a man's idea. It didn't just come because somebody felt, I needed to do this. They devoted themselves to the word of God. You know what, brethren? Anytime we start understanding the scripture and the word of God that is active in our lives, we stop living a selfish life and we start realizing that we are on a mandate, we are on a mission. There is something for us to do for this life. When you just get to understand that the word is living and active. And when the Lord whispers to you, and when the Lord tells you to do something, you just know that is the word of God. It's active right now, and I just need to obey. We don't need sometimes to wait for some people to really talk and say things to be inspired. But the, these brethren devoted themselves to the word of God. They devoted themselves to prayer. And they were able to understand that the word of God is living and active. And so the word needed to be the solution at that time. And so they became the solution. They just believed in the word and they became the solution. Acts 20, 32 reminds us. Paul says, now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. What is this word able to do? Which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. So they devoted themselves to the word of God, the word of his grace. And Paul reminds and tells us that this is able to build you up. When you devote yourself to the word of God, you're going to be keen on what God is saying to your life. You're going to be keen on what God is telling you to do. You're going to be keen and realize that the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. That is the active word over your life. You're going to be keen and know that even if I have too much, I need to still share. Even if I have too little, I still need to share because that's the word of God that is living and active in me. And so the power in togetherness will be realized much more so when we devote ourselves to what God says. Because when we realize this is what God wants us to do, this is what God is calling me to do, then everything else becomes back. You take it back and you forget about it and you move forward. 
to what God is calling you to do because it is the word of the Lord. Sometimes the Lord, in power in togetherness, the Lord will ask you to do some things that are painful or somehow that are quite challenging. But because it is the word of the Lord, you're going to rise up and act because the word of the Lord is living and active. That's what this brethren devoted themselves to. And because of that, there was such a power that was able seen, to be seen because of them being together, devoted to the word of the Lord and the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Power in togetherness is a demonstration of God's spirit and power. It has to be our together fellowship, the brethren unity, has to have a demonstration of God's power and spirit. The Bible tells us in verse 43 that there was a deep sense of awe came over them all. And the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. That the more they stayed, the more they, they had the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, the more they devoted themselves to the word and to prayer. There was a result. There was something that was again seen. That there was Oh, a sense of oh over all of them. And because of the sense of God fearing, the sense of oh, oh, this is what the Lord can do. Oh, this is the mighty hand of God working. Oh, this is the anointing of the Lord upon us. Because of that, the Bible and their belief in it, the Bible says even the apostles were able to perform miraculous signs and wonders, and there were many. Our power in togetherness must have a demonstration of God's spirit and power. The Bible tells us that, 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 that Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians 2.4 that when in his ministry he was teaching and preaching, he did not just go to the people. 1 Corinthians 2.4 And my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. He says that if, if, in as much as I came to share, in as much as I have had a walk with you as a church, in as much as we have had a walk together as believers, there have been a demonstration of spirit and power. Not only plausible words of wisdom. And we need to just realize the power in togetherness, there must be a demonstration of the presence and the manifestations of the Holy Spirit of God upon us. And this is the same power, Ephesians 1.19 says, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe. So the incredible greatness of God's power is amongst the people who believe. And so if we have it, it has to be demonstrated. It has to be seen. And that's what happened with the brethren. There were signs, miracles, and wonders, and many people were added unto them who were being saved. That means that meant there was also the power of salvation. There was also the power of healing. There was power with the miracles and the wonders that were happening as a result of their together and their devotion to the word of God, to prayer, and to fellowship. And so we need just to check ourselves. We need to desire as well. The Lord, we don't just gather, we don't just be there. And, and there is nothing that is coming forth as a demonstration of your spirit and your power. Again in Ephesians 1.19, as I continue, the Bible says where we read, the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe. And then he says, so the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him, the same mighty power that raised Jesus from the dead and seated him and positioned Jesus into the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realm. The Bible says the same power within us. And so this is the same power that need to seat people, that need to position us, that need to take something into a different place, into a different dimension. And so the sense of awe was great. The Bible reminds us in Deuteronomy 34, 12, that even when it came to Moses and his life, there was the kind of unity he had with God. And when it was his death, the Bible records that with the mighty power, Moses performed terrifying acts in the sight of all Israel. You know, at times right now, what we wonder more about at times 
is the level of evil as opposed to the level of godliness. We all, we wonder with the kind of the level of ungodliness that is reigning, the kind of sin that is reigning, as opposed to the level of godliness. And so the Bible reminds us, as we have just read, that we need to be a people. There is a power of togetherness that must bring a demonstration of God's spirit and power in our lives. If you go to a website we call providence.com, you're going to find a story about a judge they call, who is called Fran Caprio, who presides over within the court system. And what is amazing is how he meets the needs and the cases of the people with compassion. And people, the whole world, send him money so that when he's meeting the needs of the people who come to the court, and when you look at some of the stories that go through there, somebody comes, maybe they have a ticket. They, they, there was an offense, or rather they, they went through the lights, and now they're in the court. But they say, I went through the lights because I was rushing my mom to the hospital. And the judge want to understand, are you alone? And the judge goes further to really know. What, 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 what made you just be the only one? Somehow rushing your mom to the hospital or your loved one to the hospital. So that's why, judge, I was not able to see that light. And then sometimes goes ahead and asks, okay, so if, if your parent is in the hospital, are you able to do this? You know, so, judge, I don't have a job. And he goes ahead to even say, I have received this money. We're going to pay your penalty from what I have received. And beautiful stories are told. You look at him sometimes when people are taken there. And so they have talked about that this is how he meets people and cases with compassion. And you can tell the power. You can tell that sometimes in those situations, somebody is not in their mind somehow, so to speak. Because they are just rushing somebody to the hospital. Some of them would even say, I, I, I don't know, I don't know. My mom was just crying or somebody was crying in pain. So I did not see the light. So I just went as I took this person to the hospital. Sometimes brings the children. And at times when it is the case, invites the children up there and says, so this is what your dad or your mom or your guardian did. If you were the judge, what would you do? And it's surprising how sometimes some of these children speak. And some of them speak and he says, that is a judgment. And so we need to have a demonstration of God's spirit and power in our, in our togetherness. It, it, it doesn't necessarily mean in a church. But wherever we are, that has to be seen. I listened to this story where he talked about that Moses performed terrifying acts in the sight of all Israel. That even Israel, they, they were just terrified with what Moses was doing. I got this testimony. You can find it on CBN News about the 12-year-old who drowned and his sister decided to worship at the beach. And they tell the story when they were in the beach and, and the boy who was 12 years old drowned a little bit. They realized that the boy is just getting underwater and they took the boy out. And when they were, they were getting the nurses and other people to help, the, 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 the story says and the kind of the testimony that came, the mother of the son says, I reached at a point and I felt helpless. I was overwhelmed. I was unable to actually assist my son. In as much as other people ran, some of them were medics. They came to try to help resuscitate the boy and make sure uh, the procedure, the CPR procedure is done. The mother says, I, 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 was, I was just helpless. But then all of a sudden, I had a loud voice of worship. And when I turned, I saw the sister worshiping the Lord. And what happened? Well, the sister continued to worship. The rest of the children came to the beach and they started worshiping. As the rest are just trying to help the boy and the ambulance uh, uh, arrived. But they were saying, by the time the ambulance was coming, the ambience had already changed to an ambience of hope and strength and joy. Saying, we are not going to lose our son. And we want to bless the Lord. The son was taken to the hospital. And he got better. And even the report was like, we, we are not so sure. Maybe he may have some bit of brain damage for that time that he stayed quite a bit unconscious for some time. But, the Bible, but when they were wheeling again, 
take, you know, in the hospital, just praying and doing a few things. The boy rose up and called the mother and came back without any issue of any kind of loss of memory. But look at this girl who saw the brother in a beach front being assisted by the medics. And she decided to just turn the voice in praise. And even the medics and the parents, they got this overwhelming power of the presence of God. You know, we need to be a people that there is a demonstration of God's spirit and power in our togetherness. At times when we hear the kind of evil that happens, we are like, oh, this is what is going on. We are like, oh, is this really, is this really what people can do? Is this really the kind of evil that is reigning in our world? And at times we get over it. But the Bible reminds us that we need to get into a position where we're going to wow the world with the power of God. And they're going to say, is this the God they serve? Is this the God they worship? Is this the God they declare? Is this the God they talk about? Then we must believe in him. Many times we read all about the evil. And at times all that gets in us is fear. All we get is we are so afraid. But the Bible says that we have not received the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. That is the kind of spirit that we need to allow people to know. That is the kind of God whom we serve. There's a gentleman called Jonathan and Melissa. They, they worship. They are worshipers. And you can also get these, them on YouTube. And they give a story about the miracle that happened. And out of this miracle, they wrote this song that, is, that we sing. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. And so they talk about this son of one of their members who was, they just received a call and they were told Jackson, that is the name of the boy, has been taken to ICU. And they started calling people to pray. It was Christmas season. And they called people to pray. And they called people to pray. People started gathering in the houses. People started coming to the, to the church to pray. Because they said, we're going to raise an army of prayer for Jackson. But as they were doing it, he says he got this spirit of unbelief. And he started thinking, I I'm not going to see Jackson again. And so when the spirit of unbelief came to him, what he decided to do is to defeat the spirit of unbelief in a declaration. And this is how the song came to be. And these are some of the lyrics of the song. And he says, I will raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than my unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. And so our togetherness, there must be a demonstration of God's spirit and power. And the more they prayed, they continued to pray. They continued even to have a song. And it never took so long. And Jackson came out of the hospital. You know, sometimes we wonder, God, can you do this? Yes. We don't have to wonder more about evil and ungodliness. We just need to come together and allow the world to wonder about the God whom we serve. And allow the world to wonder about the kind of a miracle that God can do in our lives. We don't have to always be afraid. These are some of the few examples I brought forth to us today. But I pray that in the power of togetherness, according to the word of the Lord, that we're going to bring that forth. Demonstration of this power in the spirit, and in the power of our God. Moses performed the terrifying acts. I take you back, he says, the same mighty power that raised Jesus from the dead and seated him, positioned him there, is the same power reigning in us. And so we got to have this power of togetherness. When a need comes, we just need to, to gather together and pray. Some of these situations we call like, the others who, who it's like, Lord, is it really possible? But even though there was unbelief, they continued to pray. They continued to sing. They continued to worship. And a miracle happened. This boy is on the beachfront, completely unconscious. 
But the sister rises and faces on a different direction and decides to raise a song of worship. The other day I was just listening to a story. And, some, and when you look at the comments of this story and the kind of evil that had happened, the many people were like, no, no, this is what happens. But I pray that the power of togetherness brings the stories of people who can say, yes, 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 this is what the Lord can do. We have had too much of evil, recorded, shared, known, experienced. It is our time to allow Christ and the power of his resurrection to be understood and felt and people to testify about it. The power of togetherness. The Bible says this, and because of this power, there was every day adding up of those who are being saved. This phrase is quite important. They were being added up, them that were being saved. Them that experienced the power of this fellowship. Them that experienced the power out of the fellowship. Them that experienced the power of God, the manifestations of the Spirit of God in that fellowship. You know, church, we just need to tell the Lord. We, we, we want to have a moment. And use us. For that is the kind of spirit you have given us. Not of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. The same spirit. Ephesians 1.19. I pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe. It's already a resource given. The Holy Spirit lays it bare for us. That our togetherness can make the world one. That our togetherness can make the world have a testimony about God. Our togetherness can make the social media and other kind of print media change stories. I don't know when last you read a very nice story. Many times we all read about the bad stuff. Oh, we, it is our time, church, that we can even stand and pray and tell the Lord, we're going to hear testimonies of how many people are getting better. Maybe one of the things that are happening quite often every day somehow is when, in the Ministry of Health, they talk about the people that have recovered from COVID. But I don't know how many times we really are excited about it. Or we just focus on this is the kind of cases we have every day. But the Bible says that we just need to be people who are together and demonstrate this unity, this togetherness by God's spirit and power. And there are people that you need to gather together. Is there a family that you need to gather together over a matter? These people gathered together over Jackson. They brought forth a song. And the miracle of the baby coming back right from ICU happened. We just need to know that this is happening. You know, one, as I conclude, is that when we, we must be able to know and to differentiate between a critical spirit and a discerning spirit. Because the critical spirit robs us of the power of God. The critical spirit is when we stand and say, oh, this, is, this can't happen. It is way beyond man. Uh, you know, I, I mean, we can't even argue about this one. You know, such cases, I uh, expect them to end this way. But there are people who have turned around death. They have been condemned to death. They have been told you are dying. And they go and cry. The Bible talks about the man in the Bible. He was told, you're going to die. And the Bible says he turned and he told God, remember one thing that I have done, oh God. Remember. And he turned death and he was added years. The critical spirit sometimes robs us of the power of God. And even though the same of situation that can come forth to the people may seem more powerful than the people, the situation is not more powerful than our God. We can stand and say, it shall be in Jesus' name. We can stand and say, death no more. Yes, we can pray. The report is right here. You are told you are given a few days to die. 
and people turn back and call on God and they walk out. These are the kind of testimonies and the power of manifestation of God's life in our lives that we need to talk about as well. The power of togetherness. We are not defeated, brethren. The church gathered. The manifestation of the Holy Spirit devoted themselves to the word of God that is active and powerful. And there was a demonstration in miracles, signs, and wonders. And salvation was experienced in their fellowship by adding numbers into it. If you feel defeated today, John 17, 21 reminds you and me that they may be all one just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Jesus was saying, we are all one. And let the world believe that you sent me. How? By them being one. Jesus Christ and his power is your possession this morning. You only need to tell him, Lord, I may be overwhelmed. Maybe I have really wondered about evil. Let me now wonder and be in awe of your power and the manifestation of your power in my life and in the world. Let me now wonder. Let me hear testimonies of your grace and your greatness. Let, let's start seeing it. Let me start seeing it in my life. Let me start hearing it in my life. Because that is the power God has given you. The incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe in him. Ephesians 1, 19. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, help us, Father, to understand the incredible greatness of your power for us who believe. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead and placed him in a high position of honor. Father, help us to tap into this. Help us, Father, to show the power in our togetherness. That the Holy Spirit is with us in our prayer, in our fellowship, in our breaking of bread and our Lord's Supper. That the power of God is making an addition for them that are being saved, for them that are being healed, for them that are receiving testimonies and giving testimonies that, Lord, you are God. This incredible power that pushed off the sight of the material things and they would sell property and share together with the needy. Oh, Lord. Sometimes, Father, we wonder over the evil, but allow us now to be in awe of your miracles in our lives. Allow us, Father, to be in awe of your greatness in our togetherness, in our homes, Abba Father, in our church, Jehovah God, in our nation, Holy Spirit of the living God. Just like this young girl who would worship, just like these people who would gather together and pray, and the spirit of unbelief comes, but they declare, no, they're going to raise a hallelujah to you. Yes, Lord, help us, Father, to realize and to understand that there is incredible power of you, our God, at our disposal to us who believe. And let that bring power in our togetherness through the manifestation of the Holy Spirit of God. We bless you, Jehovah God, and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. The, may the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.